officers across the council share a commitment to ensuring transparent and good decision making, I have huge confidence in this. With the shared planning service, we have a comp comprehensive implementation and change program underway. It's an enormous bit of work. Uh, and that's to ensure that we improve where we need to. And I'm fully supportive of this process and of the staff who are working hard to deliver in the best interest of our residents. Bringing two large and complex services together was never going to be an easy task. But I am confident that while we still have some way to go, we're on the right track and we are making solid progress. Thank you, Leader. Uh, Mr. Fulton, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, I do. Um, I very, I, I, I appreciate your response very much, and I appreciate the the level of thought and engagement you you gave to my question. It would be good if residents didn't need to take time off work to come to council meetings to feel as though they had been heard and listened to by the council. I feel that there's a disconnect between the sentiments you the, the leader just expressed and. Um, my day-to-day -day experience as a resident of the district. Um, I hope that the, will the, that's all, I don't actually have a supplementary question, but thank you very much for your response. Thank you. So, so Mr. Fulton, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way, uh, particularly as somewhat, I mean, you're the only resident who's come to two, to my meetings so far. Um, so I hope that you don't feel disconnected because you know we do we do welcome we do welcome you here. Um, but as I've said, we know we know that um, I mean we know that improvements are still being implemented within the planning service. So I, I trust that your experience will be of improvement. But I hope you will also always feel welcome to come here to bring your concerns directly to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, and may I thank all of the public speakers. Uh, as the leader has already said, you are always welcome. We do appreciate your involvement. We come now to item seven, petitions, page Roman two of your agenda. One petition has been submitted as set out in the agenda, which is related to the Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Policy and Conditions, which is an item later on the agenda. Mr. Tariq Ahmed, the lead petitioner, is present at the meeting, and for that reason, I propose to bring item 8F, the item I mentioned, on your agenda forward and deal with it as the first of the motions before us after the petition has been heard. Do I have a second for that proposal to bring item 8F forward? For that reason, I propose to bring... Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Can we take that by acclamation? Does everyone agree? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, before we move to that debate, we shall receive the petition. So, uh, details of the petition which states that taxi drivers reject the mandatory company door sign and which has received 164 signatures have been circulated with your agenda. They're on page 2 and there is an accompanying letter on page 19. So, Mr. Ahmed, as the petition organiser, would you please come forward and present your position to us? Your petition to us, I beg your pardon. When the traffic light turns red, you must stop speaking. Councillors may then ask you for, uh, ask questions of clarification, and uh, we will then respond to your, uh, your petition. So please, will you now present the petition? Your petition to us, I beg your pardon. You, you may be seated. You must stop speaking. Councillors may then ask you questions of clarification. And get uh, this petition then called to be unfair to travel. So please will you not present because of this policy. And it's been very big in our safety drivers, driver safety, because when you have to self like work with more than one company, it's potentially not practically safe to come out of the easy road to change your door signs and loss of incomes. Because lots of small companies don't have the company size and they don't require uh, the door size. So pretty much this policy is not uh, the drive not impact one with a different company. And also uh, small companies are losing income as well because they cannot uh, ask drivers to do jobs. And 
increase the jobs and it's also affecting uh, the wonderful people like uh, our customers because small journeys and all these things and also um, small jobs because they have to do the door samples and they can all that to be the MI, you know, uh, so losing customers are losing the jobs. Also, uh, the loss of earning by drivers, uh, companies are dictating, uh, big companies are benefiting from this policy, particularly because they been targeted as drivers not work with other companies, small companies, and their customers are with, which seems unfair. We also have an article, uh, artificial quota for the companies, which was proven that one of the big companies uh, taxing the drivers uh, on their WhatsApp group and on their platform not to work with other companies to catch you. Uh, and then we will take care of our systems, which we have been to the last week, previous meetings, but they will not be able to prove their classes and price But they're putting pressure on the drivers to put the door signs on, which is making it hard for them. And these drivers are working for that company and they want to earn some extra money. So they not letting them know work in the small companies so they find out they wasn't able to find out before this policy and cash earning money and it was nothing to leave about <laughs> because of this policy they are not illegal for them and also the points they're getting if someone reported them doing uh, uh, so all the other effect for this policy is because they're forcing to have the door sign on 24 7 which is affecting uh, breaking into the cars and the you park at night at night you go to Police are disrupting drivers with the their car moves on, just take everything off, don't make it look like an obvious taxi. And if this police is not able to do that anymore, because if someone takes a picture of the council, then the drivers will like to get penalized for that. So, please, I think pretty much that's it. Main reason they are linking this policy, the door sign, this for public safety. Uh, it has nothing to do with public safety. It's purely serving the big companies to benefit them, so to stop all the work that the small companies are working with small companies. And also, uh, there was other uh, issue raised to have to go to the door signs necessary because of customers, complaints and all that. Uh, if you want someone's uh, like, uh, interest or something, well, when we are not working, we are not part of the normal environment. If any public person has an issue with the car park or the door sign is being proposed, traffic laws and the technology, it doesn't have to be the company side of the first place. So that's what we reckon. Um, uh, can you wind up, please, Mr. Abid? You had your three minutes. Thank you. Stay there, please, because if there are any questions of clarification which members wish to ask of Mr. Ahmed, you are entitled to do it now. Are there any questions? Yes. So that's what we um, no, thank you. In that case, Mr. Ahmed, would you return to your seat, please? And may I remind you, you are not permitted to join in any of the discussion which might follow. We thank you very much indeed for coming, Mr. Ahmed. I call upon Councillor Bill Handley, as the lead cabinet member for the Environmental Services and Licensing, to respond to the petition. Councillor Handley, to your seat, please. Thank you, Chairman. And can I first through you any of the discussion? Uh, thank Mr. Ahmed and his thank you very uh, much driver colleagues for their engagement in the process. And the as the leader of the Department of Environmental Services Licensing to respond to the petition. And also for presenting the petition here today, and also the previous licensing meeting that we colleagues for their engagement. As Minister Hartman may or may not have heard, that the taxi policy uh, is possibly going to be, and you've heard the discussion on the taxi policy, is probably going to be de deferred today for further consultation. Um, his engagement in the further consultation process would be very welcome, and his comments in the petition will be noted in that process. I want to reassure you. Accordingly, Chairman, I would propose that members note the petition and give it due consideration when considering the licensing taxation process. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, according to our constitution, we have five options with a petition. Uh, we may vote in support of it, we may vote against it, we may note it, we may refer it to another body, or we may agree on any other uh, appropriate action. So those are our options. We now have a proposal that we note this petition. Is there a second for that? Please vote against. Thank you, Councillor Bratton. Noted.
Does anyone wish to speak to another body to this proposal? Councillor may agree on any other. Uh, uh, Thank you, Chair. I just simply want so those are all the We now have a proposed Councillor Hanley said in this understanding that is there a second? something might be inferred or might not. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Does anyone wish to speak to this proposal? Councillor may agree on I can give you some clarity. He is not in charge. Are there any other questions? Thank you. So, to ensure my understanding is correct, so despite the petition here today, we're saying that as councillors we're not going to discuss it. Uh, I can give you some clarity. Which I think um, it'd be better if we could have a discuss the minutes of the discussion included in the consultation. Thank you. That is not the case. Uh, as I intended to say in a short while, uh, late correspondence has been received which makes it appropriate that we should postpone the discussion of the issue, but we shall certainly be discussing it, and we shall certainly be taking uh, Mr. Ahmed's uh, position and the petition uh, signed by our uh, initial 60 uh, late uh, into account when we do that. Which makes it appropriate that we should postpone the discussion of the issue, but we should certainly... Uh, our legal officer has reminded me, I shall be proposing that we postpone the... Um, uh, the discussion of item 8F. Uh, that is only a proposal, and if members wish to defeat that proposal and discuss the item today, that is still a possibility. Um, the, our legal officer has reminded me I shall be proposing that we postpone the, um, uh, the discussion. Of Thank you. Uh, you can discuss the petition now, that is what this uh, session is for, um, but with the, the discussion on the actual licensing policy. I am going to propose will be uh, deferred to a later date. So, does anyone wish to discuss the petition? Uh, you can discuss the petition for now. That is what this uh, session is for. Thank you. In that case, uh, again, may I thank Mr. Admin for the petition, which we will take into account, and we now move on to a later date. So, does anyone? Oh, I think it was. Yes, we need to take a formal vote on the proposal that we note this petition. Can we accept that by acclamation? Thank you very much indeed. And again, thank you, Mr. We then move on to item 8F, which is the Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Policy and Conditions. It comes from the Licensing Committee on the 11th of November. It is on pages 115 to 214 of your agenda. Late correspondence has been received from a number of different parties concerning the new proposed taxi policy. It has not been possible in the limited time available to us to carry out the necessary due diligence and to give proper consideration to the points raised in that correspondence. I am aware that there has been extensive consultation already on this policy, but it is important that we continue to listen carefully to new information and to allow time for potential further consideration should that be required. Accordingly, I propose that consideration of this agenda item 8F be deferred to allow for further period of consultation and consideration as appropriate. Do I have a second? Thank you, consideration. I think the leader was, uh, the leader was there. I propose the consideration of this agenda item. All right, if you're going to scrap, Councillor Roberts uh, has seconded uh, my proposal. Uh, may we approve that by acclamation, or do members wish to debate it? Right, thank you. Um, Councillor Lynch. Mr. Matter of clarification, because you mentioned that it was referred to licensing, my understanding was actually referred to licensing in the climate environment. Uh, my proposal. Climate environment. Uh, may we approve that by acclamation? Thank you. Is, is that true? Right, thank you. Um, Councillor Lynch. Pardon? Mr. Matter of clarification. Thank you. Licensing presented comments back to no, the other way around. Right. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, climate change presented comments to the licensing committee, but this comes from the licensing committee. That is what the chairman of the licensing committee tells us. Licensing presented comments back to. Uh, we can't debate this uh, in this uh, uh, forum. Does it actually matter? Can we get clarity afterwards and put that into the, uh, into the minutes? Yeah. That is what Sorry, thank you. Yes. 
Councillor Red. Sorry, as, as Chairman of the Licensing Committee, you're right, Councillor Red. What actually happened was that the licensing committee um, recognised that there were matters to do with the zero carbon and low emission vehicles that we wanted. We wanted to seek advice from the Climate Change Committee, and it is their comments that have been put by the officers into this version, uh, which has then been reported directly to the Council. That's correct. So, no, it's just been commented to seek advice from the Climate Change Committee. Thanks to Officers of Council 
who've made, um, put so much work into this. Um, when we took control of this council 18 months ago, this council did not have an investment strategy. Um, but our, our officers have worked really hard to make sure that not only do we have a strategy, but we have one which has been passed uh, through SIPFA, uh, taking into account all the statutory guidance uh, for local government, and I believe has now given us an investment strategy which is uh, exemplar and, and for others to follow. So I would urge Council to accept the recommendations so that we can uh, continue with our investment program of uh, £300 million pounds over the next five years. Thank you. Do you have a second? Thank you. The leader is going to second this proposal. Do you wish to speak now, leader, or here? Right, thank you. The leader will reserve her, her comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this item? Thank you. Do you have a second? Councillor. Councillor Williams, would you want to have your comment? The leader is going to second this proposal. Do you wish to speak now, leader, or here? Thank you. Originally, when this came to us, it was for £100 million, um, and that was in February of this year. Um, I welcome the increase in scrutiny. I think members of the time will recall, hopefully, that that was something that we raised, and I'm pleased to see that that is, that is uh, being held. But page 182 of our papers in February, sorry, because I might have to go online for those ones, um, though I do still have them. Uh, the government shares SIPFA's concerns about the scale of borrowing for commercial purposes of some local authorities. MHCLG and HM Treasury are considering further potential interventions. Now that was in the report put together for the budget when it was 100 million. Obviously this has increased significantly since we can all agree on that if, if nothing else. Um, and I'm just wondering whether this is expected to be affected by those interventions because if they were thinking that back in February in current climate, to then put that up that amount is, is a, it's very unnerving and concerning. Um, I don't know if I'm comfortable with the scale of what I've been proposing to make. Thank you. Councillor Hazel Smith. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my, mine is more to do with the, the detailed document, page 34. Um, just, just reading through um, <coughs> the process that, that um, we will go through in deciding on these investments. Um, this, this reads a lot better if uh, paragraph 6.3 comes before paragraph 6.2, um, just reading, and then you don't have to describe <coughs> what the um, investment selection team is further down. So, um, just, just to reorder those paragraphs, really, this, this and, uh, I, I, I do understand that um, because of the hole in our budget, we do need to make more of our investments, and um, so it is important that um, it does go up to the so, um, Thank you very much, Dean. Come to the talk. I, I, I do understand that um, because of the hole in our budget, Thank you, like uh, Andrew Neil with this one. Um, I was just going to invite the lead member for finance. Would he, would he like to uh, pay tribute to his namesake, Councillor Heather Williams, who you know, raised a year ago and some of the concerns about governance and the proportionality and the scrutiny of this document? So we're not saying he shouldn't have investment strategy. I think it's a good thing. But someone's been through this with a big red head and put a whole chunk government of extra scrutiny from the scrutiny governments. So we're not saying, you know, I mean, it's not just, you know, it's not just a little bit. It's some pages and paragraphs of the stuff, and quite right too. And the only person, when you were you know, chipping off about how wonderful all this was, the only person who raised the praise of the note of cautious was Council So I invite the IMP member to pay Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Chairman. Chairman, I, I made it. Thank you. I made the point at scrutiny. I'll make it again here. Um, this strategy does lock this council into some very long term investments. 
uh, investments which in some cases are in single properties with a single tenant and if that tenant should fail then we are left with a property which can be made at it for some time. So there are risks that we should not underestimate those risks. It does need to be properly scrutinised, it needs to be properly monitored and care, great care needs to be taken at every end. Thank you very much. I have no other speakers. Um, Linda, do you wish to speak now? Thank you. Uh, well, no doubt Councillor Williams will um, talk about this as well. Um, so, so we always welcome uh, all constructive uh, criticism advice from, from all members. Um, the majority, but my understanding is the majority of the uh, amendments of this were uh, due to the fact that it went through SIPFA and it's been through a very, very robust uh, review from SIPFA, which has um, highlighted areas where things could have been strengthened up. So, uh, picking up on um, the other points, the important thing is that we have a broad portfolio that we do not have all our eggs in one investment basket because that is risky. Uh, so by, spread, by spreading our investments, we minimise our risk and, uh, and I've benefited from the uh, SIPFA training. I possibly uh, wouldn't have known all this stuff uh, two years ago. It's also important that we have exit strategies for all our investments and that we have a very, very robust asset management programme uh, in place. In fact, my understanding from the training I've had is that you know, it's all very well buying stuff with all these millions of pounds, but actually if you don't manage it, then it won't work for you. So we're taking this extremely seriously. Uh, the opportunity to do nothing as far as investments is long past. We, we all know, whatever our political affiliation of the challenges facing local government now, uh, thanks to the uh, continued reduction in central government funding and the uncertainty in the future. So if we just want to keep on treading water, we have to have revenue from investment. If we want to actually start delivering more, delivering on our priorities, particularly in my mind those to do with decarbonising South Cambridgeshire, we have to generate more money to do it. And if we want to succeed, that has to be considerable sums of money. So we have reviewed the, uh, the overall sum we're investing in this in order to meet the needs that we, fo we foresee. And I think that um, Councillor Williams has done an outstanding job on this, and I also pick up on his thanks for officers who have uh, really helped us dramatically and put something together which actually I think will be an exemplar for many other councils. Thank you, Councillor John Williams. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I welcome comments from everyone. And in fact, we have had uh, comments from uh, members, we've had comments from officers, and to be as open and transparent as possible. Uh, we have ensured that the document that you've received highlights those changes that we have made because we, we, we've got nothing to hide in this and in fact my purpose was to produce a document that was fit for purpose, that took on board best practice from elsewhere, uh, took on board the comments that were made by members of the workshop took on board comments that were made by officers of this council and indeed uh, comments made by SIPFA to ensure that we have a document that is robust and will ensure that um, we can carry forward our investment programme with the knowledge that we have taken on board all the guidance that we have to and, uh, and, and need to. As to the amount, um, the leader has already explained why we have increased uh, the amount uh, of, of borrowing, um, amount of money that um, we can spend on our investments. It's come about because this council needs the income from our investments to maintain our services, not only maintain our services, but actually to improve our services. And I accept that, you know, commercial investments in particular are risky business, which is why on page 44 we have an investment criteria matrix, which our officers are sticking to rigidly, 
which uh, was agreed by uh, scrutiny and cabinet, and again, which has been out to consultation uh, to enable members uh, to, to make comments on it. And I think it's a pretty robust um, matrix to ensure that uh, we are making sure that we look after the money that um, our residents pay, but it's better that we use our money, to make sure our money works for us, to make sure that rather than having to sit in a, in a bank or a building society earning next to nothing on interest, that that money is making money for us that we can put into our services. So I am not in any way ashamed of what we are doing here. It's the way, it's the future of local government. It's not only us that's doing this, but every council in this country is doing it. And finally, on the point of governance, I will draw your attention to page 55, which gives the, the governance arrangement. And as you see, the, from the officers' investment selection team, it then goes to the investment governing board, it then goes to scrutiny, cabinet, and finally this council. So there are a number of checks and balances to make sure that there are ample opportunity for members to check and make sure that we are spending this money wisely and taking and, and having due regard to the risks involved. So, as I say, I would commend that you support the recommendations of this report so that we can go forward with, as I say, a robust investment strategy which will enable this council to ensure that we can protect our services in the future from investment, uh, from income made by investments by this council. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Before we go to the vote, I wonder if I could ask you simply to comment on Councillor Smith's question on page 34 that paragraph 6.2 and 6.3 should be reversed. I'm quite happy to accept that. Thank you. We will now go to a vote on this issue. Uh, if you are uh, in favour, will you press the green button? If you oppose the motion, you press the red button. If you wish to abstain, you press the yellow button. We will now go to a vote on has everybody voted? Uh, may we see the result? Uh, in favour, will you press the green button? If you oppose the motion, the red button. If you wish to abstain, you press the yellow button. We now go to a vote on as everybody. Thank you. 35 have voted in favour and 10 have voted against with one abstention. Sorry? 26, I beg your pardon. I'd be very grateful if we tried to find a larger uh, display for this. 26 have voted in favour, 10 have voted against, 1 has abstained, uh, and therefore the motion is carried. Thank you. We move on to 8B, the General Fund Revenue and Capital Provisional Out Term 2018 and 19 comes from Cabinet on the 2nd of October, pages 63 to 76 of your agenda. Again, I call on Councillor John Williams to propose the motion. Thank you, Chair. First of all, um, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of typos. Um, on page 69, um, we refer to the amount um, that's been led to Ermine Street um, as um, this is paragraph 22. Yeah, paragraph 69, paragraph 22, um, as 28,054. Obviously, that should be 28 million. Uh, 54,000. I only wish it was 28,000, so I'm afraid it's 28 million. And then the other typo is on page 75, where um, we've missed off the, the, the three zeros at the top there on the rollover value. So actually, we have rolled over 330 pounds. Uh, it's actually 330,000, etc. Um, okay. I'm very pleased um, to be uh, presenting this report because it's the first, it refers to the first year of Lib Dem control of this council. And that, during that first year, we had record revenues. Uh, we had more, not only more income from our business rates, uh, but also more income from grants and from the shared planning service. 
And that has enabled us to um, be able to put some £6 million into reserves. Now, normally, um, if we were certain that that income would continue, then that, that would be factored into the medium-term financial strategy, and that money would go on then for the next five years as income enable us to uh, put that into the bottom line. But we can't because we have a fair funding review uh, which by all accounts will take money from this council for social care. And I've heard nothing in any of the uh, manifestos, the Conservative manifesto, which suggests that that will not happen. Um, we have also got the possibility of um, the NHS winning its case on whether it is a uh, trust or not, and we could be exposed, if the government decides not to refund us, we could be exposed to several millions of pounds for having to give back to the NHS. And finally, of course, we have Brexit. Who knows what's going to happen next year with Brexit, how that's going to affect uh, the cost of our services, how that's going to affect the living standards of our residents, but we must ensure that um, we, we be prepared for that. So in normal circumstances, that extra revenue would be put into the uh, medium-term financial strategy to be carried forward, but we have to because of these unknowns. Um, take it as a windfall and put it into our reserves and make sure that we have a decent amount of reserves to meet these challenges that are coming down the line at us. But nevertheless, I think it's a really good, um, really good result uh, for the first year of, uh, of, of this council administration, and I look forward to be able to present an even better outturn for the current financial year. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Do you have a second? Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do you wish to speak now or at the end of the debate? At the end of the debate. Thank you. Uh, it is now open for debate. Uh, may I ask you all members please to keep your uh, party affiliations uh, under wraps and make sure that we discuss the issues as they, as they are presented to us. Is there anyone who wishes to counsel with them? Thank you. Uh, it is now open for debate. Thank you. Uh, I think all is bolted, perhaps, in that board, Chair. But um, I just have a few matters of clarification. Um, it's just on page 73. Um, the, we got a grant to do the village design um, statement, which is some of that's going to be passed on. Just checking that the grant wasn't time limited, so we're not in, in risk of losing that. I know some grants are. Um, and if it was grant funded, is there a reason why we haven't been able to grant to supply the resources? And the other thing was on the local plan rollover, um, just to check that that's not, you know, from any delay point of view, but just risk of losing that. Bit of clarification as to why, why that's been made. The local plan rollover on page. That's also page 73. Thank you. And the other thing was on the local plan. Which paragraph of page 73 is the local plan rollover? Number two, thank you. Number two. Yes. So number two and number eight, uh, number five are the issues of the one, one and two. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Paragraph of page 73 is the local plan rollover. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wright. Number two, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, it's very interesting to hear uh, Councillor Williams taking full credit for the very successful year. But I think councillors have heard me say before here um, what he was actually using last year as businessman was a Conservative manifesto that we had bequeathed as Williams' five year manifesto. And uh, we did point out at the time that. It was very unusual for a new administration to come in with no manifesto and to be using our manifesto in its first year. We will certainly look forward to seeing the Liberal Democrat one when it comes forward. And we did point out at the time it was very unusual. I just wonder if we could get some clarification on the. and to be using our manifesto. On the face of this, certainly we should say the Liberal recommendation to the council. And, and do tell me if I've got this wrong, so you can see the point of the wrong balance. 
uh, a great, great deal of resources um, to, uh, to implement. Um, but as we talked about before, we have, we, have no, we have no option but to do this. This is the future which we face, and we have to deliver on a transformation program, a service improvement program, to establish a uh, sustainable council going forward. So that is the reason for the recommendation. That is the reason for the level of the transformation reserve to be sitting in place, and we actually do face Councillor Williams. Councillor. Order. The point of order requires a reference to the Constitution. To which part of the Constitution are you referring, please? Thank you. Councillor Williams. Order. Councillor Williams. Thank, thank you, uh, Chair. I um, hope to be able to answer uh, the point of order requires a reference to the Constitution. To which part of the Constitution are you referring? Um, can I take these other points first? Now, talking about the improvement grants, obviously we don't really know from one year to the next how many requests we're going to get for improvement grants. So, so therefore, the carry rolling over of improvement grants from one year to the next is, is something that um, you know happens at the end of every financial year. So, I, I can assure... About the village design statement, point one, not about dispensing blocks. That is not a point of order. Will you please not interrupt? <coughs> Sorry, I thought you did. And, the, and then the other, the other question you asked was to do with local plans and the, uh, and the neighbourhood plans. And obviously, again, you know, that very much depends on the speed... Councillor Williams, that may have been my mistake uh, because I originally referred to five and two villages. Uh, items one and two on page 73 to which the question referred. Right, okay. So, right, so we're not interested in the group now. Great. On, on the design statements, again, on the design statements, it very much depends on demand. And you cannot, you know, Every year you make an assumption that things are going to be done within that financial year, but you are dependent on others to, to, to complete that work. And it's natural, therefore, that you roll forward the money that's not spent into the following year so that that work can be completed. So I really don't um, understand your concern on that. Uh, Councillor Williams, the, the question was whether the grant would go out of time. As far as I'm, I'm, I'm aware, uh, there is no constraint. Thank you. That's an answer to the question. Um, Can you continue now, um, Now, going back to the issue of um, transferring uh, or ring fencing three million of the uh, money in the, um, in, in the uh, general fund uh, to cause transformation. I think any of you that have, um, any of the members that have been interested enough to go to the presentations on the midterm financial strategy will know exactly why that £3 million pounds is required to help us um, change the structure of this council to deliver a council which. Um, is more efficient, is able to deliver us revenue savings while protecting frontline services. And that money is there as a pot of money to enable us to do that. It doesn't mean that we're going to spend up to three million pounds, but it is a, it is a provision there, a, a, a budget which we can use towards that transformation. I'm hoping that we don't spend up to that three million, but, but it needs to be there to ensure that we have the flexibility to enable us to proceed with the transformation of this council and its reorganisation of its management structure. So that's why that three million is there. It still leaves us with nearly 15 million in the general fund, which is available to uh, you know to meet any future uh, rainy days. 
and that's why I'm quite relaxed that we should be ring fencing three million for transformation. We have we have finished the debate, Councillor Holmes. If you wish to if you wish to make a point within the debate, please can you do it before we actually wind up the debate. We will now move to the vote. If you wish to approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you wish to oppose it, you will press the red button. And if you wish to abstain, you press the uh, yellow button. If you wish to make a point within the debate, please can you do it before we actually wind up the debate. Has everyone voted? Move to the vote. And we see the result. If you wish to approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you wish to oppose it, you will press the red button. And if you wish to abstain, you press the uh, yellow button. I, I believe I believe it is 26 to 12 no abstentions and therefore the motion is approved. Thank you. We now move to item 8C. Councillor Williams, don't go away. Can I ask you to uh, propose this motion, please? I believe it is 26 uh, Thank you, Chair. Again, um, I first of all must draw your attention to a couple of typos. Uh, on pages 83 and 85, once again, the three zeros have been missed off uh, the uh, second column. So we're talking about thousands, not uh, thousands. Um, okay. The interesting um, reason for uh, the difference in the housing revenue account uh, between the budget and the, what, the actual out, outturn is I draw your attention to the review of assets. And that review of assets has led to uh, a saving in 3.4 million in depreciation. Um, and there's also, um, we have to take into account not only the rollover into this year of projects that haven't been completed, but actually the carry forward from the previous year of capital projects that have not been completed. So when you take those two into account, we end up with a slight um, surplus on the uh, on the capital budget account. Um, but um, that's the real reason. They, they are the main reasons why uh, the outturn is different from that that was originally budgeted. But again, I ask uh, I ask this council to support the recommendation. Thank you. Do you have a second? Councillor Smith, thank you. Do you wish to speak now? No. Thank you. Are there any other uh, people who wish to speak to this motion? Uh, Councillor Smith, do you wish to speak? Councillor, you don't have to. Do you wish to speak now? Thank you. Councillor Williams, do you wish to wind up the debate? Uh, no, I've said all of Thank you. We will move to the debate then. Since nobody has opposed, can we take this by acclamation? Thank you. We now come to item 8D, which is not Councillor Williams. This is the review of polling districts and polling places, which comes from the Civic Affairs Committee on the 29th of October, pages 87 to 96. As chairman of the Civic Affairs Committee, I move the recommendations of that committee as set out in your agenda. The council agree the current schedule of polling districts and polling places to be retained with no changes. May I note that at the Civic Affairs Committee, the question was raised about Campbell's status with respect to visually impaired voters. I have asked the Electoral Affairs Officer, and he assures me that this has been reviewed, and that Kirsty Human, who is responsible for the county station, will make sure that uh, there are adequate provisions. So that was the only issue that was raised uh, by Civic Affairs. I therefore move this motion. Do I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Brand. Does anyone wish to speak? Oh. We'll take you, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Roberts, it is. Does anyone wish to speak? Can we take this by acclamation then, please? Those in favour? Thank you. Uh, may I just point out that the list of locations may not. Uh, be accurate for the forthcoming election simply because a number of these locations were already booked before the election was called and therefore you should not take this as a defeat.
definitive list of where people will go to on the 12th of December. Thank you. We move now to 8E, and uh, again, I call upon Councillor Williams to propose this motion. Thank you, Chair. Well, um, I think, Chair, as you can see, this uh, aligns with our business plan and our uh, desire to be green to our core. Um, the, um, the two major um, capital items um, are replacing now as you can see what are called footpath lights with LED lights and uh, using um, and then using the assets that we have here uh, at South Cambridge Hall to improve our energy consumption um, and, um, and enable us to go forward with a more efficient building um, and operation here at uh, and at, uh, the at uh, uh, Cambridge Hall, Hall, South Cambridge Hall. Hall. Um, both of these, um, the money for both of these things will be coming from our renewables reserve uh, and not from the general uh, uh, capital fund. Uh, so I have been asked to explain exactly what uh, the footlights are, footpath lights are that uh, we are replacing. It is a very complicated situation in South Cambridgeshire. Uh, we have county council lights that are actually, that are under a PFI, uh, are actually uh, leased to uh, Baffle Beatty um, under a 25 year uh, PFI contract. So they are the majority of street lights on our public highway and this does not affect them in any way whatsoever. We don't have our uh, lights and they are called footway lights because um, they, that distinguishes them from the county council lights, which are normally known as street lights, but now footpath lights by and large are on the public highway and in many cases are the only lights down some of the, uh, some of the roads concerned. Now they are owned and maintained by us, but under an agreement dating back to 2006, um, the electricity, the cost of actually putting the light on, is borne by the parish council. Don't ask me why, how that came about. I wasn't in the council at the time. And if I was a parish council, I would be a bit thinking about that. But I, anyway, we are where we are. There are then also lights that are owned by parish councils. A lot of these lights were lights that Balfour BT were going to remove and parishes came in and took ownership of them to enable them to keep uh, going. Now we have, um, for some of these lights, some of them are maintained under a contract with us, some are maintained under a contract that the PC has taken out with a, a suitable supplier, but once again it's the PC that pays the electricity for those lights. And then, fourthly, there are other there are lights owned by others. Um, such as housing associations which are on unadopted roads or, or private roads and again they are not affected by this. So the only lights that are affected by this are our street, our street lights or, or footpath lights that are owned and maintained by us for which the parish council pays the electricity on unadopted so I hope that clears up exactly what these lights are. We are contacting all the parish councils to give them an inventory of the lights that are owned by us and we are asking them to, to work with us in their replacement. We are doing a one-for-one -one replacement. We are not going down the county council route of taking one in ten out. This is a direct one-for-one -one replacement. And when it comes to sensitive areas, we are we will be replacing the ornamental lights with ornamental lights. So again, it's not the same as the PFI scheme where Balfour and BT replaced ornamental lights with modern lights. We are not intending to do that. So we're going to be working very closely with the parish councils and we hope the parish councils will take the opportunity of maybe upgrading some of their lights at the same time so that we can do a package. 
But as I say, um, that sort of explains what this is about, and I hope that surveyed any fears that uh, explain the situation. As to uh, South Cambridgeshire Hall, well, that's PR, um, I, we are looking at not only PV panels over the car park, we are looking at ground heat source uh, pump for, this, uh, for these offices as well. So we are going to make this as green as we can make it, an example, uh, an example to other businesses, other owners of commercial properties in South Camps to invite them to do the same. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Do you have a second? Uh, thank you, Councillor Goff. Do you wish to speak now? We'll wait until the end. Thank you. Other any comments? Councillor Wright. Thank you. Um, and what I want to talk about is principally the footway lights. There was an awful lot of waffle there. These footway, footway lights are 30 to 40 years old in many cases. They're burning electricity day and night. Um, Thank you. Absolutely useless. I think it was at the, the first climate change meeting we pointed out that this was part of the Conservative business plan 18 months ago. It was a quick win for this council. Why has it taken you all that time to get to this stage with no full report coming to this council and no outline, no timeline for the project? There's been an officer working on this for some time. Why have we got so little in this? Please see it in the budget. All that time. You know, if we agree to the call, we mean it. This was a quick win. It should have been done. And no outline, no timeline to the council There's been an officer working on this for some time. Why have we got so little? I think what I'm going to say, I'm going to make it quite clear, um, is page 106, that the spend that was made, I have absolutely no issues with. I think it's, it's a good thing, but I'm going to use it as an example, okay, which, which relates to um, the canopy at Water Beach for the solar, solar panels. I absolutely think it's a marvellous idea. But it was done without budget. It wasn't budgeted for. It's, it's, it's a new thing. Um, and other things that were budgeted for, such as the telephone, haven't happened. And I just want to stress the importance and aspiration that when we go through the budget, that there's no point in having a budget if we then don't fulfil it. Or sometimes things do crop up. But to fund projects such as that without being budgeted, I think is not the best of endeavours and ideas, and I'd just like to throw that caution out there. Thank you. I have no other Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll be quite brief. I mean, not the best of endeavours. I have. And I'd just like to I, quite frankly, I would rather us be spending you know, several million on a renewable system from a renewable system and, and less on transformation. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll be tinkering with the management. I mean, it's all this sort of stuff. I mean, you know, I'm quite frankly, I would rather us be spending. Whilst money may be good on the renewable concept and on the renewable in recent years, it's had a less on transformation from various iterations of which have been so easy and indefinite. There was a proposal of a long term of the certain revenues of the four years ago to be so the answer to the less on transformation. But at that time, there was a shortage of production. So if we wanted to put the Dow's on the we would have to buy them from China. And it seemed to, it seemed to be then all the years of that decision. So the the cost of transferring stuff from China to put on the roof here, not at that point, it's just it's just in the sense in terms of sustainability. But you know, things change in the markets and seem to be seemed to be for certain hours are there. My my concern we are gilding that validity in the sense that there are lots of other things that the South Cambridge Judiciary Council could and should be doing in terms of uh, time, 
virgins and not to just not to keep polishing this particular act and this and the thought that it would be quite a film for the this 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 tiny otherwise everyone, you know, it's a bit like some sort of begging in the people. Everyone else sort of living in bug huts and they look up at this just this sort of shining example and say, gosh, I wish we did this acting, but they haven't got the public money. So just a point. Thank you, Councillor Topping. I'm not sure I share your view of brevity. Councillor Hayes. Thank you, 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 Councillor Hayes. Thank you,
thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Smith has um, put very eloquently what I was going to say. We need to put that house in order. We need to set an example if we're asking others to actually go on the decarbonisation route. Thank you. I'm getting a little concerned about the desire of parts of this council to spend other people's money. It's not your money. It's not the council's money. It's the residents' money. I'm getting a little concerned. When I look at I mean, this is the third time today I'm thinking, my goodness, this council. And I've never thought that in 30 years of being on this council. I've seen this council change so many times, so I hot dinners. But I've never ever felt the worry that I now feel about the amount of money that you are pressing to be subdued, other people's money. And I'm very worried about the thought of allocating, again, £1.3 million pounds of other people's money to your pet projects. Councillor Roberts, will you please address your reports to the Chair? Thank you, Chair. Sorry. So, Chair, I am extremely concerned about what is happening here. This is only after a year. What are we going to be like in three years' time, two years' time, when they, the next election comes? I wonder how much money will have been spent then. Other people's money on pet projects. Not everybody's desire to do remedies to this building. I think what our residents want to know is spending all this money, what is it in, in it for them? And I have to say, damn little. Please, Liberal Democrats, stop acting like men with deep pockets and money trees because it is going to come crashing down and you'll run out of money and we will have to go into austerity. That's what the Labour Party did when they were in charge. They spent money they didn't have. They borrowed money they didn't have. They're trying to do it now. And you are doing the same. Get a grip of yourselves. Councillor Brett. Um, I would just simply like to point out that I was on that planning committee when the solar panels over the car park were considered, and to my shame we voted against it, but at that time we had not declared climate change or um, climate crisis, and we have now, and our views have changed because of that, and I think it's right and proper to take consideration of the, the, the new science as it comes forward, so uh, it was on grounds of aesthetics. Thank you. I have no more speakers. So we will. We, Councillor Topping, we work according to the a Constitution, which I shall explain to you after this meeting. Members, we go to the vote. But, oh, I beg your pardon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Goff. So we will. Councillor William. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Topping. Can I first of all pick up on a, 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 a point that Councillor Smith made, which seems to have got Councillor Topping very agitated, and that's using money for reserves. Can I point you to your 1819 budget? Okay? Councillor, uh, sorry, your 1718 budget, which Councillor Wright was very keen to point out, was your budget, right? Your budget took £500,000 from reserves to balance the books. So you were taking money from reserves to balance the books. Okay. It's true. Look at your own empty Councillor Williams, will you address right. the point? Address the chair, please. Okay, sorry, sorry chair. Okay. On telephones, a um, mention was made that um, we still haven't yet um, changed the telephone service. Well, we have introduced council anyway, anywhere. And council anywhere means that we have to reassess what our telephony requires. You know, there's no point installing desktop telephones in our offices if our officers are working from home or all over the district from their laptops. We need to look for a better system. Um, oh yes, apparently we've not been looking at other things. We've just been following your um, 
your capital budget. What about Waterby? Someone said that hadn't been budgeted before. That was an initiative. We came in, we saw that there was an opportunity there to put PV panels on our Water Beach depot. We went and seized that opportunity. You could have done it. You could have done it for years ago, but you didn't. Fortunately, we did it just in time before the tariff stopped. Okay. And finally, on street lights, you had £300,000 in your budget to replace 1,800 street lights. It was a joke. You didn't even know where they were. That's why it's taken this long for officers to put together a programme which we can now implement. So please, look at, your, at what you did when you were in power and you will see that you have, looking in the past, with gross tinted spectacles. We now come to the vote. Councillor Goff, I, I understood that you did not want to speak. I offered you... Um, yes, you, you are the second last door. Right, I'll allow you to speak. Okay. So I, I just would like to bring two thread to this conversation. One about transformation, one about projects. No, I just want to bring the two I together. Understood that you um, not because to to me, me, part of the transformation of this organisation is yes, creating an organisation that are actually the most So I, I just want like to bring these two opportunities to see things which can be done about And let me just talk about the three individual projects. First, let me get the Water Beach PV. The reason that was in the budget was that no one had seized that opportunity within a time frame to benefit from the EBIT tariff. And if we hadn't the flex the budget, we would miss that opportunity. So if we needed the officers and the skill to be able to seize that opportunity, and flexing the budget surely was a good thing to do. Otherwise, the opportunity wouldn't have gone out that opportunity. The second thing is street lighting. I inherited that project. I agree, Council, right, it should have been done, it looked obvious. So, but he actually, the scoping of that project when I took over that whole project was like absolutely cool. Right? No one knew what state those street lights were in, except Council, when I said, no one knew where they even were. What's actually happened is we've now got the officers who have the capability and the dedication to bring that project forward to the point where it can be actually implemented. Right? That is not an easy task. Putting a 1.3 million and project together is not no one new way. And actually, the credit to the office is what actually the organization. Now, now the state can do that. And the third thing, with respect to this building, it is, as Councillor um, Smith said, about putting your own house on point three. I've had the privilege of looking at the first pass through of this project. It is an extremely impressive, integrated energy look at this building in terms of what can be done. It is, it is not only an example, but it actually will save significant amounts of energy for this council uh, and reduce the impact on the climate. It is, it is on its own terms, a good investment. Not only that, it is an exemplar of what this country needs to do with respect to it. And actually, I'm delighted to say that we might be at the forefront where we might actually be leading in this particular area. So that is the sort of organisation which we're trying to build. That's why we have brought in the Chief Executive. We, we have and why we have put together a transformation program to deliver exactly these sort of projects. Thank you. Thank you. May I remind seconds that they speak second to last, not at the very last. We've now come to the vote. If you approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you disapprove and reject it, you press the red. If you wish to abstain, you press the yellow. Thank you. May I remind seconds that they speak second to last, not at the very last. We now come to the vote. If you approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you disapprove and reject it, you press the red. If you wish to abstain, you press the yellow. Thirty-seven in favour, one against, and no abstentions. The motion is approved. Order. We move on to item nine, the combined authority. I invite the council to note the reports on the work of the combined authority in July and in September, as outlined in the circulated papers. 
and ask the Council's representatives of the combined authority to comment if they wish to do so. Councillor Bridget Smith. Uh, thank you. Just very briefly, um, we've now moved into the new uh, governance structure whereby we have executive committees. Um, uh, the Housing Committee has now met its... Um, I'm trying to think what it approved. I don't think we approved anything actually. Uh, but the board met this week and uh, strangely had an application for just under £6 million from Lara Homes for a development in Great Abingdon, which is obviously um, South Cambridgeshire. Uh, it went to the board instead of to the housing committee because the money was coming out, out of the £40 million that's been squirreled off the £100 million housing uh, fund. Uh, that's a rolling fund of money. The application had quite a rough ride through the board for a number of reasons. Uh, the development is actually quite few, uh, few homes. Uh, they have insisted that there's at least uh, five affordable units. There's potential for more because they're going to come back and try and renegotiate the uh, planning permission that currently exists on that. Uh, also, if you just add up all the projects that have been funded out of this £40 million, it actually takes us £2 million over that. Uh, but we are told that cash flow allows the, uh, the board to do that. Um, so that's where we are. Um, there's also, there's been a, le a letter from the Minister, uh, Jane Berry, talking about levelling the powers of mayoral combined authorities, uh, which was sent to the mayor. I gather there is a, I think it's called M8, a group of all the, all the metro mayors who uh, got together, uh, decided what they wanted, uh, told the minister what they wanted. The minister, I believe, took out all the checks and balances and then this letter was then circulated to the mayors, which really opens up the way for an awful lot more delegated um, powers to be dissolved, devolved to the mayors, which, which could have the effect of actually where we have boards uh, reducing the influence of the boards. It seems to be giving ultimate power to the mayors on huge amounts of decision making. Uh, you know, no doubt that will be looked at again once we pass on the other side of the election. There's been a flurry of letters from ministers, the like of which we don't normally see. Um, the other thing that happened yes, uh, this week, yesterday, I lost track, um, the uh, Combined Authority agreed to set up a climate commission. This didn't have a particularly easy ride through the in initial proposal stage because, of course, there's an awful lot going on in Cambridgeshire, um, and there were concerns from uh, some members of the board that we weren't duplicating or replicating uh, work that's actually well advanced. Uh, but the board agreed in the end that uh, they wanted a commission of their own which would look specifically at the geography of um, the combined, combined authority. So I think the mayor had somebody in mind, I don't know who it was, he kept referring to a chairman, so I presume as a man, um, and I think he was going to phone this man uh, that afternoon to tell him that it had been approved and give him the chairmanship of the climate commission. Um, I did, did ask that the membership of the Climate Commission could actually represent uh, some of the very good work that's all going, already going on, such as the Cambridge Zero, which I've already talked about. Did you tell him that it had approved and give him the chairmanship? Chairman, I'm sadly unable to attend the September meeting, and I've nothing to add to the July report. Thank you. Did you have a substitute in September? Thank you. Councillor Higgins. Yes, Councillor Higgins. Yes, Councillor Higgins. Nothing to say. Um, Councillor Mason. Councillor Mason here. No, thank you. Uh, are there any questions to Councillor Smith? Thank you. Did you have a substitute in September? No. Well, in that case, we note the report. Uh, we do not need to vote upon it. Nothing to say. And we move to the appointment to the independent remuneration panel. Um, the items referred to on page Roman 5 and page 261. I invite the leader to move the recommendation. Thank you. This is just a formality. Um, I regret that uh, Mr. Simon Harris, uh, who's one of our current members of the panel, uh, has found the need to stand down. Um, I'd like us to write a letter of thanks for all the service that he has provided for us, and um, I would like you to support the, uh, his replacement by Jane Phillips. Do you have a second? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Mills. Do you wish to say anything? Thank you. Does anyone?
wish to speak? That's the right. I was just wondering if the leader had in mind any of the services in particular this gentleman had supplied to us that she had in mind thank you, for. Do you wish to say thank you? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Well, are, are there any other questions or comments? Fine. Uh, so just the services that he has fulfilled in, uh, in his role as a member of the Independent Remuneration Panel. Thank you. Um, there, there are no speakers. Um, Councillor Wright, you've already spoken. Uh, so just the services that he yep. has fulfilled in, uh, in his role as a member yeah, I think, of the I think we can take that offline. We, we are discussing at the moment the appointment of Jane Phillips. Uh, I take it we don't need to go to a formal vote. Can we take this by acclamation? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, item 11, membership of committees and outside bodies. Uh, I believe two groups do have changes to report. Uh, leader. I'm just trying to remember what it was. I think it was on the JDRC, JJDCC, and we were going to swap over the the other member with the deputy. So with a substitute. With a substitute. Yes. Councillor Dalton, Councillor Hunt. I'm going to swap over. Um, I, I mentioned that in my last bit. The other member with the deputy. So with a substitute. Yes. Councillor Dalton, Councillor Hunt. We're going to swap over. Excuse us for a moment. Um, That's Councillor Top. Uh, Councillor Top. Yes, Chair, we're swapping uh, Councillor Benson with Councillor Batchachaya on the. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Does any other group do? No, there isn't another group even present, so, uh, other than myself, and I have nothing to report. So we accept those two changes uh, from now on. Thank you. Item 12, questions from councillors on page 6, Roman 6 of your report. We have notice of two questions. Were there any remarks? Start with myself. No, so we just have two questions, which I hope we will take half an hour. Uh, first of all, a question from Councillor Peter Topping. Thank you. Who is going to answer this question? We have notice of I am. Councillor Hawkins, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, if I remember rightly, um, at the last focus of the meeting, I'm just going to put all the motion on the screen. And then you complain about not getting it. And now you complain about getting it. What? At the wrong time, probably? Um, so forgive me if that confuses me, but it seems that it doesn't matter what I say. I'm not satisfied. But it was a coincidence. It was only formally published on the 11th of November. But yes, we then started a round of informing all the planning committees, JDCC, and that day was the very first time that the opportunity arose as much as we say. This plan was satisfied. Thank you. It wasn't. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary council topic? Of course, Yes, Chair, I do. Yes, we then started a round of informing all the planning committees. When the major banks decided to liquidate them, that's the Call the traders in early and said, This is the beginning of a fire sale. And it seems to me that we're having a fire sale of our energies. So I just wonder when the next report on the five year land supply is published, when it shows a further lurch downwards from its current 5.2 position, whether the planning committee will be called in even earlier for a little bet. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, there is no fire sale of our villages. It's not under us. But how should you get? That was under you. Um, the five year land supply calculation figure that has been published is for the joint five year land supply city. There is no fire sale of our villages. But how should you read that in the real house? Can you refer your remarks to the chair, please? I think, um, 
perhaps the Council of Tokyo didn't read the report, because it has been jointed by the trees from the city and some tribunals. And if he were to read the details, he would find that actually some camps were swept in the Can you refer your remarks? Just to this team, now, the reason that there is a difference between what was projected in the local plans that has been joint and what we have now is because the government itself actually changed the way in which sites that can be delivered are actually covered. So it's not our fault. It's the fact that the government changed the how we actually find delivered sites. And I'm happy to discuss with the Council of Law and also, I still have the open invitation to Councillor Wright. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thank you, Chairman. As is Thank you. Councillor Handley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in order to make my answer uh, in any way understandable to, to the public, I wonder if you'll just allow me a few seconds to explain what recap is. Thank you, um, RECAP is the shortened uh, name of the Cambridgeshire and the Peterborough Waste Partnership. Um, works, you know, we work together as a partnership, working together continuously improve waste services, increase recycling and reduce waste. It comprises a, a, a group of uh, bodies, a group of small bodies, one of which deals with flight. Um, just so that they know the partnership, um, seven councils, Cambridge City, Cambridgeshire, East Cairns, Fenland, Huntingdonshire, Peterborough City and South Cambridgeshire. Now, your, uh, Councillor Williams' question is, um, the, refers to the post, which was a, a recent, uh, recent post, which is a part-time post, two and a half days a week. Um, and it's funded by the seven councils jointly. And the officer's role is to focus on fly tipping by coordinating the efforts of the various parts um, and other agencies such as the National Bombs Union, the Environment Council. So the post is not actually uh, involved in the officer's prosecution, it's to focus on the part of the officer's successful scrap campaign, which is the, um, it's, it's offering advice on as to how the residents might reduce the chances of waste ending up in the wrong place, in other words being fly-tipped, by choosing a reputable company, so this, this officer is uh, playing a part in that. It's a very successful campaign with a great deal of interest on media and social media. It's offering advice. So it's never been the intention to measure the success of the post by the number of prosecutions, but to answer your question, uh, sorry, to answer your Council Williams uh, question, um, I would say that there have been 226 investigations, 43 fixed penalty notices, three formal cautions and two prosecutions in the last two years, uh, and there's a further one which is in due to go to court next spring. I think it's been, I think it went to court and I'll be sure that's so. That's all being held by the investigation. Um, one of the big benefits of recap is to be, to bring environment officers across, across together, across borders. And um, one good example of it, it working um, has been lines of communication, um, a recent investigation into two fly dipping incidents in different neighbouring uh, counties or councils. Um, led to uh, a joint interview on the caution and the joint prosecution. So the partnership is really working very well. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope that answers uh, your question. Thank you. Councillor Williams, do you have a supplementary? Thank you, Chairman. The, the reason I've um, raised this is because I'm sure other areas have had issues with flight of living, obviously, you're familiar with Cottenham. Um, in fact, social media our communications group actually ended up in my ward because we've had significant numbers of late. And, and I request uh, every parish council meeting to my report for the comments that the members said. The reason I've asked about prosecutions is 
but that it's really important actually that that is the only way we feel that we can actually we need to take action. It is criminal and it causes enormous distress to the residents and you know, not as, um, and the countryside as it is. We need to protect our countryside. Uh, could you possibly tell me how in the last year, please, given figures for the last two years, the last year, because that's what we're looking at, the introduction of the Chairman, I'm sorry, I don't have those figures to hand, but I will find them and give them to you after the meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, we now come to uh, item 13. There are three motions before us, each of which may take up to half an hour. It is four o'clock, and I wonder if members would like an, 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 an adjournment, or shall we carry on? Who would like it? Can I just... Thank you very much. We now come to uh, item 13. We carry on. Very well. Thank you. Um, which members, obviously, if you need a, a comfort break, you may take one. Well. Uh, so we come to item 13A, standing in the name of Councillor Pippa Halings. Uh, Councillor Halings, would you propose your motion, please? Thank you. Um, it was here in November that we had a cross-party supported by Councillor Topping um, so we motion for a zero cost of the that was unanimous. And um, as I put it here, what we immediately did was to incorporate that into the business plan. There was additional funding there for measures. It was here in November that we had DSMOG UK has put us up alongside Oxford City Council as one of the top councils in the UK to actually act on the back of our pledge for zero And that's something cross party we're doing as well as the Traditional Environment Committee, which is through all the things that we're doing as the council. We have, as we've talked about today, we've done practical things like the Water Beach panels in the Water Town. Finished. We're now looking at the the retrofit in Osgoode Town Council to bring in savings and um, over time. And we have, we have got a zero carbon communities grant, which has proven very very popular as well amongst parish councils and local communities. And importantly, that motion is about the local plan because it's in the planning that we get a standard. And we've talked about this as well, about the standards um, that developers are held to. And it's only through the local plan that we can set those standards. So we're looking at the new local plan being able to bring those standards in. And that motion is focused on that. Um, we've talked about this as well. The point is we, we do need to do more developers. And this week, um, even so, they more so, we've had the latest data saying those climate tipping points we're crossing them now. So we're seeing a cascade of unstoppable events that we thought would happen under five degrees warm the world, and they're happening under a one degree warm the world, which is what we are now. And so it's seen as really um, that we we have no choice to err on any side of the portion, and everybody needs to act with the urgency and the level of emergency that's necessary. So we, this motion really is to join with the other councils across the UK that have declared a climate emergency. And what beyond what was in that motion in November is to say that within six months we should look at what we can do in our own backyard. What should we do in terms of what's happening to make those services, to say they can have the carbon emissions and be a leader and a model for others. Also, number three there is ensuring that all strategic decisions, budgets, and approaches to the council's own future planning decisions be in line with that zero carbon shift and be a leader and a model. And that we work with parties and partners across the district to deliver this. And that if we want this to be any earlier than the 2050 pledge we put, then we do call on national governments to provide local governments and others with the regulations, the powers, the resources that are needed to be able to enact that transformation if necessary. If we want to be on the same map as other councils across the UK, we're recognised as being a leader. There is a map of councils that have declared a climate emergency, but we're not on that and we declare the emergency part of it. And it's not just the words. We need to act with even more urgency with the commissioned research we've done on the same map as other 
on our own council of state regulations, we can now say how much emissions will we be projecting and generating over the next five to ten years. So that we can come back here and say, so what will we do about that? How can we drive those emissions down as a council? Terms of our own state and operations. And the early evidence that we've had commissioned, commissioned from Cambridge University, is showing that you know we don't have much land. We've got this building, that building. We do have a fleet, and that's the waste fleet. What are the ways in which we can be a leader of this and drive our own emissions down in ways that generate saving and, early and also cross our housing stock? How do we make sure that our residents? And we've heard that 33,000 people in Cambridgeshire are facing fuel poverty this winter. That means they're choosing between heating and food or school clothing, uh, school or clothes. So ensuring that the houses that are stocked are fully properly insulated, which a huge amount has already been done, but making sure that that is done and that other burglars also follow suit. So that's what this motion is about. That means they're choosing. Thank you. Do you have a second? <coughs> Leader, thank you. Do you wish to speak now or at the end? I'll speak now. I don't, I don't want to um, go over what uh, Councillor Haylings has so eloquently said. Uh, but the news in the, in the last two weeks has actually been terrifying. Thank you. The election, which we've got in a couple of weeks' time, is a moment in time in regards to the result. We'll all get over it. But climate change is forever, and we may not get over that. On Tuesday at Cambridge Zero event, Sir David said that we all of us, all of us, have to make dramatic changes in our behaviour and in our lives now. Not tomorrow, not next year, but now. And he finished by saying that if we do not, these were his words, our legacy to our children will be mass extinction. The message really doesn't get much stronger than that. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Thank you. In that case, we will go to a full debate. Uh, sorry, can I see hands for those who do want to speak? Thank you. Councillor Roberts. Oh, Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? Thank you. In Armageddon tomorrow arguments. Uh, when, I, when I read this, I thought, actually, there's, there's quite a lot of it um, that I could go along with from item two um, and through. Though I would think to myself, well, actually, this is going to be taking um, a lot of officers' time. We haven't got a lot of officers. We've got departments that are very underfunded and, and understaffed. Um, and here we are, um, forgetting what is our core jobs, which we've always known in the past what we did, and we're going along this tangent of trying to pretend we're saving the world. We're not going to save the world until people at places like India and China make some efforts. And whatever this country does is minimal. It's absolutely microscopic. And I think the arrogance to put on here that this council declares a climate emergency who the hell do you all think you are? Councillor Roberts, will you address your remarks to the chair, please? Sorry, chair. And also to the motion, which has nothing to do with India. No, no, but this is, we've heard all the arguments about what's going to happen to the world, etc. It's arrogant, Chairman, I would suggest, for a local council to be declaring a climate emergency. Yes, there's a serious situation that needs sorting out and it will be sorted out and I have no doubt. It's arrogant. But what you are trying to put, and I'm very sorry, I'm afraid that this is a terrible um, political point, Chairman, during an election to put this on the agenda. I noted colleagues from the Liberal Democrats were actually photographing it. No, no doubt it will be on the Liberal Democrats' uh, websites and in their papers. Um, can we refrain from we can, party political we, comments, please? We can do our bit, Chairman. Well, they may, let's see. Um, we can do our bit, Chairman. But let's not pretend for a moment 
that we are going to save the world. And let's not pretend for a moment that the world actually is in the direst an emergency. Emergency is a very specific thing. It's immediate. It's what's going to happen now. You act. What we are talking about things that are going to happen sometime in the future, which gives us a chance to mediate it and put industry to give us a chance to mediate it. But I would suggest to the Liberal Democrats one way that they may save the planet is stop cutting down trees. Councillor Roberts, will you stop the making political, political comments, please? Which is piling through my door. If I find any more, I shall make a bonfire in the open. Councillor Bygone. Thank you, Chairman. I'm very pleased to support this motion, uh, as I was to support the uh, 2050 Zero Carbon Target. Uh, carrying out a full audit of the Council's activities and opportunities for carbon, carbon reduction throughout the district is a good plan, and it builds upon previous efforts that the Council has made, such as placing um, solar panels on the roofs of the future uh, Zero Carbon House and stuff. So it's becoming clear that the whole world is going to have to become carbon neutral by 2050. And uh, as Councillor Roberts mentioned, not every country has uh, done as well as this country has in terms of um, pursuing carbon reduction. So I think that we are going to have to meet our national world targets further. And South Cambridgeshire should be the lead aiming to meet our target even earlier still. So, zero carbon will be a win-win for this district because clean air will make us healthier, it will make us live longer, and there will also be a huge boost to our economy because all around the district there are green start companies, they're working in business parks, they're working in garages, they're working on kitchen tables, and they are developing green technology that is actually going to address these issues, and that is South Cambridgeshire industry. Um, if we set ambitious targets, that is going to help turn those startups into successful businesses. So, green technology is the industry of the future, whereas coal and oil belong in the South Cambridgeshire. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think at the beginning you said it's able to speak against. So, green technology is the industry of the future. I mean, I do not want to speak against this motion. I would indeed support it, but I do have some questions. Thank you, Councillor. Points that I wish to make. Thank you, Chair. The points I'd like to make is that it comes down to what are the things that this Council can and should be doing. So, I'd like some clarification on that rather than declaring any points that I wish to make. And I can just give a couple of examples. And you know, these are not uh, comes down to what are the things that reach is not political. But, um, my understanding is the boilers that are being installed into the houses of elderly residents in our and I can just give a couple of examples. And the council's houses are configured in such a way that the they're not only pushing those people into your poverty, but they're also in money actually does not sustain houses. And therefore I urge whichever is the lead member that's responsible to, you know, to, to sort of take a look at that, because that is something that this council could and should be doing to further the aspirations that Councillor Hayley has asked us to endorse. Um, and secondly, you know, the planning committee, and therefore I urge last, the last planning committee we were told that we could not consider the impact of flooding on a planning And I wasn't at this particular meeting, but I've been told that, I believe it was the scrutiny, elephant was told that they could not consider the issue of putting in electric car charging in considering a particular scheme. Now, these are all things that this council could and should get a grip on, and therefore it seems to me that someone should get
give us an assurance that indeed these things will be focused on and addressed, as well as the broader aspirations of Council behaviour. Now, these are all the things that have to this Council. Finally, might I just say that the leader has mentioned that she visited today with Attenborough twice in this Council meeting, which recently. I heard David Attenborough speak at last last year in a much more pluralistic audience, but I'm just not a ruler. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. Chairman, thank you. I too wish to uh, lend my support to this uh, motion, but I do want us to make sure that we're not crossing, that we are totally on board. Um, and I say that before the leader speaks. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. I several times Chairman, to thank you. I too wish and yet her deputy is presiding over an organisation which wants to rip out literally hundreds of trees, some of them 80 years old, which sit between St. Neots Road and the A428, and to replace them with a garden fence. There is, I believe, an alternative, just simply moving the track, or whatever is going to run between Campbell and Cambridge, to the north of the A428. But it's not being properly considered. And I would like to think that all our efforts would go into supporting this activity and not picking and choosing those who are going to run into my Thank you. Councillor Mills. But it's not being properly considered. I just wanted to address several of the comments that I've heard. Climate emergency is imminent. It's not something that you can wait to do. We're representatives of our residents. Thank you. It is within our remit to make the changes that we want to be. I applaud this move. It sets a great example to others who we hope will follow. If enough of us making those changes, the world might save itself. We need to be part of that. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Dr. Batishari. But I just need a little bit of support from you. Thank you very much. When you when you talk about nationally, can you please make sure that United Kingdom, this country, uh, I mean I mean, this country stop dropping all its rub, uh, rubbish and uh, rubbish and the bin bags to the uh, to the developing country. Because it has a direct impact on the it, it has a direct impact on the zero carbon issues, which is which is also yes, which is also nationally and internationally. And, uh, so can they please stop their rubbish bags to drop in the in those countries. Because it has a direct Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hawkins. Dr. Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I've been quite brief. I asked Rick to when Councillor Topper and talked about uh, not being able to put points. Yeah, rubbish bags to drop I'm just reminding that the local plan that we adopted in 2018, which was created in Dr. Hawkins' previous administration, refused to have more than. On development, we cannot. I mean, we already had a question today about ignoring that policy. We cannot base the policies on that we adopted. If it wasn't going to waste, we're going to try and put that in the administration and perhaps we might give us that in your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other speakers, so, um, Councillor Ailings, would you like to sum up, please? Thank you. And I would really like to emphasize the opportunity that Camp Hull brought up because this isn't just about you know the impacts, it's also about harnessing the opportunities that this could be for our district and others, particularly our district, I think for the green economy. You're absolutely right. And that's creating hundreds and thousands of jobs that can be in technology, green technology and renewable energy. The offshore wind farm industry, nobody knew that the price would drop. Nobody could speak. No, and that we are now a global leader in that. 
you know. So it's it's definitely using all the R and D and the capacity, and the new jobs that six farmers can go straight in here around IT and renewable energy. So it's a huge opportunity for our for our area. And completely counter the topic, absolutely agree that we should really be looking at what's happening with housing, especially for vulnerable people. And in fact, at our last Climate and Environment Committee, we had a really in-depth look at how on earth can we ensure that we do our bit with the charities that are working this winter with families that perhaps didn't get the card of the home scratch. How can we identify them with people who are trusted to go into their homes and find out if we can actually do something you know, with them this winter? And the audit is happening um, next to the cash sorry. This winter, thank you very much. Um, and as everybody knows, I'm not in the chair. I do think it's one of the biggest challenges we have. You know, as council, we to really look at what's happening and what um, this means in terms of development going forward. And, and rubbish, yes. And so we have, as the southern countries, as we know, have said that China and Malaysia are no more receiving our rubbish. We can no longer make developing countries the dumping ground for our habits, you know, for development. And so we have to understand in our own backyard how much we're producing and what you know, then we have to reduce it and have a better recycling. So I absolutely support you in that. And the emissions that come out of landfill you know, in your countries as well, how you're doing with vegetables. And it's the same for us. So we definitely need to address that. For me, the analogy, I think, is, you know, we as councillors, we're running the night, we've got a parkland, and they say, Middle of the night, there's a fire, and, the that and we all go up there first. Like we're all out there under the, the hoses, and, it's the same and you know, the park manager the says, analogy, I think is, if we use you know these hoses, we can tame this fire because the fire is coming on. But by 3 p.m., we've probably got this sorted. The we can do this if we all work together, and we all got it all sorted. And the young one says, actually, we use these type of hoses. We could get it done by 2 p.m. <laughs> And the young boys said, yeah, we haven't got time to wait until 2 o'clock. We're going to lose more trees. Surely we can do it faster. So this is about those dates, you know, the end target dates. But actually, that's when some people came out of Dubois, smoke blackened faces. And they said, yeah, it actually depends on what time you got up in the morning. Because we went straight out after this. And what we've done is we've dug the ditches to make sure that the fire can't leave. So what we've done is restricted that, and that's exactly what we're talking about. The emergencies now, we're acting on it now. We're not fighting about the targets and saying, what do we do now, in the next year, in the next, as council says, what do we do now? And if every single council acted, because every single council determines what we've done, every development, when you put that all together, actually local councils are transformative around this. We will determine which way we go. And this isn't being left only to national government. It's local council and determining what they invest in the new economy and what kind of developments are happening. So I do think it's up to local authorities. And I think that we will get it actually for local councils. Thank you. We now move to the vote. If you approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you reject it, you will press the red button. If you wish to abstain, press the yellow button. Has everybody voted? Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. We now move to the vote. If you approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you reject it, you will press the red button. If you wish to abstain, press the yellow button. 36 have voted in favour, one has voted against, no abstentions. The motion is carried. We move on to item 13B, standing in the name of Councillor Mark Howell. Councillor Howell, will you propose your motion, please? Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, my um, motion today is with regards to the British Death Association Charter. The British Death Association Charter is of five different points. And although the first three, I believe, of South Hams could quite easily do all the small amount of work, 
achieve and was four and five, which would be the distant future, we might need some considerable more work. And that's why I'm asking the um, task force to take a look at this. But to put it into context, we have approximately 150,000 people in the UK who use BSL, BSL sorry, uh, British Sign Language, as their main form of communication or in a communication on a daily basis. And I, I just want to speak a little bit about British Sign Language, just to inform you why I'm we're interested in this, or I'm interested in this. Uh, it's the first preferred language for many deaf people in the UK. There are others, but this is the main one. And it's a language of space, movement, using the hands, body, face, and of course the head. In the UK, um, it is the first language, and of course in the Northern Ireland, they have a, a, their own um, sign language there, and there are also very many regional variations. It's the indigenous language of the UK. This has been around for many hundreds of years. Of course, there are others, English, Welsh, Scottish, Gaelic, Irish, Gaelic, and of course, Cornish. It has um, been evolved. People use it as a main form of communication. And to them, it's the schools, it's what they do. And therefore, here, so South Cambridgeshire, to be able to interact with people with this is actually something which I think we have to look at. To give an example of something that happened very small, people in mind that work in a multi of factors could speak BSL, and actually people from the deaf community literally travelled over 100 miles just to go to that one multi factors because they communicate easily with somebody behind the have to look at. Uh, members, I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Chairman. This has been seconded uh, by either um, Councillor uh, Henry Batcher or Councillor uh, Heather Williams, whichever one stands in first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you do have a second. Who's it going to be? <laughs> Councillor Henry, do you wish to speak now? Uh, yeah, I'll go now, Chair. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as the Chairman of the Employment Staffing Committee to which the task and finish group reports, happy to second this. Um, I've also spoken to Councillor Sarah Richard Johnson, who isn't here today, but has also indicated she's happy to support and, more importantly, take on the work uh, that the Task and Finish Group have been asked to do. Um, to give members a bit of background to the Task and Finish Group, it was originally set up to look at how to get South Camps onto the Disability Confident Charter, um, and I'm pleased to say, with um, quite little work actually, we're now on level two out of five, and they are working hard to get us uh, up on the scale, as it were. Um, and if you know if we can get this council as well on the British Dip Association charter and get similar accreditation, then surely that can only be a good thing. So I, for one, am happy to second this and subsequently support chair. So I'd encourage others to do the same. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this motion? In which case, may we take it by acclamation? Thank you. Thank you. And we move to item 13C. Councillor Tom, would you care to propose your motion? Um, is there anyone who wishes to so speak? I won't get into the big trough about this, which but is um, taken by information. some of you who were on the council a couple of years ago might remember that a very similar motion was put down by the current leader, who uh, uh, certainly got into quite a trough about this, and um, was saying that it was not good that portfolio holders were not holding meetings publicly. And I just asked Council through you, Chair, to reflect that and uh, was saying, you know, if you remove a safety valve, then the pressure of steam has to get out of something. And, you know, if you only allow debate and discussion and in very formal circumstances, in the two that swords lengths away from each other, a bit like Brexit, then you will have a polarised council. And that is not necessarily something that you only allow. And so therefore, I do ask the administration to consider whether swords then not necessarily now, a bit like crime with the transformation of the council, whether it will be possible for there to be what there used to be, which was for closing all the meetings, which interested councillors and the dealers to consider. We'll come along to and have a discussion necessarily now. And indeed, just to go over a little bit of old well, a very brief chair. In 2010, I was the portfolio for planning 
and climate change. Now, there's, there's something that you wouldn't expect. So, about the situation of this country, it was. And we did have a discussion about solar power, and we decided at that time, so this was nothing to do with that intent, so at that time, the portfolio was put on through the and climate change. But it wasn't all sort of serious stuff. And I remember that um, Councillor Hales we did have uh, raised a question with me to do with climate change and about Councillor Manning's plants and the impact of What? I should explain to those more recent readers that Councillor Manning was indeed a fruit of Hales. So it was an entirely legitimate question from Councillor Hales. It's not a salacious one. <laughs> but, you know, that was uh, some of the spirit of the some of the detection, but some of the consensus of the people at some time, it was the case. So it was the um, time and I didn't invite from Councillor Bell to not a sort of this, you know, it was the case that sometimes it was a bit of a might not have to say, yes, you're absolutely right, he might take some stuff back, but she might take some stuff back. And say to our you know, well, let's take another look at this. And what it meant was that when something came up to all the council, sort of this, it wasn't, it was the place that was the opposition was there, and sort of immediately goes to that direction. And the rest of the time, So I just put it forward as indeed sounds to us. You know, let's so take another three years. What it meant was that when something came up Thank you. Do you have a second? It wasn't <laughs> Councillor Williams. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Do you wish to speak now or at the end? Yes, please, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I would just say that it seems to me that when you look at the um, the questions from the public today, it indicated a concern that they were not being listened to, that their voices were not heard. They were talking about their relationship or their dealings with officers. And I would think that we need to get back, and I can tell you in my villages, the four villages I represent, there is disquiet. There is disquiet about um, various things that this council is, is going forward with, or not doing, or the decisions that are being made. And I think it's imperative, therefore, that to get back on uh, a good relationship and a feeling of trust with our residents, that they have an opportunity to come and see the member of the public who is in charge of a specific function of this council, who is acting for them, but is the actual person who is in charge of that department, that they can have an opportunity to come to a meeting of a portfolio holder on a regular basis. They know it's going to happen, and so um, they, they can make arrangements to come. And actually directly ask that person, or question that person, or talk to that person about their concerns. I'd be really disappointed if this council, uh, at this age of 2019, is not going to do that. It really is important. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bridget Smith. Thank you. Well, I don't know if I've ever been called frothy before, so I'll wear that as a badge of honour, getting frothy about things. Um, so, when, uh, uh, so I do recall the motion uh, that I, I put uh, all those years ago, uh, before the Liberal Democrats took over this council, um, and that was because there was significant uh, delegated decision-making powers and delegated spend to cabinet members, uh, uh, portfolio holders, as they were called at the time, and uh, meetings were, uh, there was a lack of consistency between the frequency of meetings uh, between different portfolio holder me members, uh, with a couple never holding meetings. Uh, Councillor Edwards, I do recall, actually was the, was the most successful in that he had meetings uh, monthly. But anyway, my, my motion was turned down. I think part of the argument was that it would cost officer time and it would cost money. Uh, and actually
actually the portfolio holder meetings that were held were generally really, really badly attended by anybody other than the officers, the portfolio holder and uh, members of the opposition groups. Uh, so when we uh, took over control of this council, we moved the bulk of decision making to whole cabinet decision making. And I'm happy with that as things stand at the moment. We will, however, in light of the uh, reorganisation and transformation work of the Council, we will look at the organisation of Cabinet to make sure that it matches well with the restructured Council. I have no idea what the outcome will be. It might be we just keep on going as we are. It might be that there are changes. Uh, Councillor Topping says that we're a polarised council. Actually, I think there's been lots of agreement today about lots of things. So I would challenge us being a polarised council. And I actually think when the press aren't uh, present, actually we agree about um, very many more things than you might think from, from attending a public meeting. Um, the uh, uh, Councillor Roberts has uh, implied that uh, members of the public don't think that uh, we're accessible and we listen. Actually, I think the very fact that people rocked up today to speak to us you know, um, shows that actually they are confident that they're going to be listening to. And I don't, I'm not sure I can recall any meeting uh, when I was in opposition where a member of the public, I mean, there must have been some, but I mean, there were few and far between, where members of the public came to ask questions and have those, have those questions answered, be they in cabinet or council meetings. They did happen in uh, portfolio holder meetings when there was uh, specific issues um, related to, uh, to villagers and so on. So so I actually think that most of our visitors today have actually gone away happy um, having been listened to and I, and I, I hope having some level of satisfaction in the responses they had. So in, in re, uh, regard to uh, the motion as it stands, my response is that actually cabinet members do hold meetings. They hold 12 of them a year. They're called cabinet meetings. Uh, on top of which, they all attend scrutiny when there are issues being discussed at scrutiny that re relate to their air responsibility. And, uh, you know, we monthly meetings, monthly scrutiny meetings. I do recall Councillor Topping, I think, uh, complaining that there was too many meetings. So, you know, you can't actually say with one hand there's too many meetings and then ask for there to be a load more. So I think it's working at the moment. I think it's working well. We will constantly review things, uh, you know, we, uh, particularly in light of the transformation, but I think there are numerous opportunities for members and for the public to come and talk to us in formal meetings and there's certainly endless opportunities for them to come and talk to me outside of meetings and to any member of my cabinet outside of meetings. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, I'm going to push this motion on a to major transparency. I, I appreciate we were told that we must have reports that we're going to be six months trial and in full cabinet. We had one series of those reports and never told that wasn't happening anymore because decisions were made collectively by cabinet. But decisions do get taken outside of cabinet on a three this week. I'm sure for Einstein and I appreciate we. But if, if there were a need member of the portfolio holding meetings, these decisions could be taken whether the opportunity for people to attend not just the physical attendance but the real public record of those meetings and the things that were discussed. If I look through the minutes of our previous full council, I appreciate um, Councillor Dr. Tommy Hall who's referenced about discussing things outside of, of, of the full council meeting, mainly because of the practical reasons, I'm sure. But if there been a portfolio or lead cabinet member meeting, I think that potentially could have happened. But the more we talk behind closed doors in a way that isn't publicly recorded, I don't think at the current time it particularly helps. So I am supportive of this. But if there been a portfolio or lead cabinet member meeting, I think that potentially could have happened. But the more we talk behind closed doors in a way that isn't publicly recorded, I don't think at the current time it particularly helps. I have no other speakers. Uh, so, Councillor Topping.
If you approve this motion, you will press the green button. If you oppose it, you will press the red button. If you abstain, you will press the yellow button. Thank you very much. So we come to this. Everybody voted. If you approve this motion, you will press the red button. Green button. If you oppose it, you will press the red button. If you abstain, you will press the yellow button. 14 approve the motion, 22 oppose it. So uh, I'm afraid the motion falls. We move now to item 14, the chairman's engagements. Please will you note the chairman and vice chairman's engagements since the last, it's actually since the last agenda, because only last night I think the vice chairman went to a Thanksgiving and pie uh, affair at RAF Albury. So uh, that will appear on next uh, Next Council's agenda. So we move to item 16, which is recommended as a, uh, a closed session uh, affair. So I need to ask do members agree that the following item of business on purple papers contains exempt information falling within paragraph 3 as set out on your agenda? and that the public interest in maintaining this exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. I need to ask, do members Does everyone agree? The following items of business. Thank you. I therefore propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item of business in accordance with section 100A brackets, four close brackets, of the Local Government Act 1972 on the grounds that if present there would be a disclosure to them of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Act as amended. Do I have the second? In accordance with section 100A. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bradford. It's for an awful moment I thought I didn't. <laughs> Can we agree that by acclamation? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, can we clear the public?